Good morning and happy Thursday, everyone. Um, I know it's been over a month since I've even recorded anything and posted anything. Um, it's been crazy hectic because my 37-week um, ultrasound was crazy. So, but I've been trying to find time to record just because every single time I put this little man down, he wakes up. So it's hard to do anything. Being a first time mom is rough. Being especially like with being a new mom it is so hard. They say this the newborn stages is the easiest. I don't know who lied to you, but it's not the easiest. Um so this is my thirty seven week update plus my birth story. So I go in my thirty weeks, my weeks went on like by like Wednesdays, not Wednesdays, but Thursdays. So it was Friday. So I was thirty seven weeks in one day. I go in to have my weekly ultrasound like normal, and the ultrasound tech couldn't get him to move. Like he wasn't moving. Like she kept shaking my stomach. He wasn't moving. So I drank some apple juice. He still wasn't moving. So they went ahead and hooked hooked me up onto some monitor monitors. I'm so tired guys. Um uh, once they hooked me up on, on these monitors I w um he was constantly kicking, moving, stuff like that. My OB she she must have had a long day because she was like let's go ahead and go to labor and delivery for further uh, mon monitoring. So I was like okay cool. I called Ricky and he said to let him know and whenever I got there they were like actually you're being checked in to deliver and I was just like like what so I called Ricky I was like how fast can you get to the hospital and he was like why and I'm like because I'm being checked in to deliver and he's like are you serious and I'm like yeah like it's time so I'm freaking out like I'm nervous I'm scared I'm happy I'm excited um, just all of these emotions, and for the time being, so I already got there, like, I was alone, like, I called my dad, and, like, he's all excited, and because of COVID, which I find is so stupid anymore, if you have, like, these, if you're vaccinated, if people are vaccinated, I can go on and on and on, and it, it really sucked, because my dad couldn't be there, my mom was there. And I didn't really find that it was fair that, that I had to choose between my parents. And I understand Ricky's reasoning for mom being there just because she's my mom. She's She went through it before and this and that. My dad really wanted to, to be there to see the birth of his first grandchild. Little man. And, um... He's just snoozing. So I'm trying to get this in right now. Um, so it just, it just sucked. And then Ricky got there. And like he said that his co-worker like, drove him to the hospital. And he was like, you know the food I had for lunch earlier? I, like, I think I might end up throwing that up. So they actually let me have dinner that night and everything. Because I had to go in and go in to uh, induce me. So I had some dinner, um, which I really didn't have much to choose from just because when I was pregnant, I couldn't really eat beef. So I feel like my birth was very traumatic for me. I don't know. In a way it is. Um, cause I feel like I was robbed of something that I really wanted to do. Um, so Friday night they went ahead and inserted the cervidil and I have a strong pain tolerance and so they gave me some Benadryl to try and help me sleep which didn't even help at all like I was still up like I was still feeling the con like I was still waking up to the, con to, to the contractions and stuff like that like I'm pretty sure you guys can tell I'm like super tired like I just want to go back to sleep but um for those who have, who have been following me i figured I'd give y'all an update, like, an overdue update, um, 
So, after 12 hours, like, 12 hours later, I was at a 1. Because whenever they inserted the story, like, I was completely closed. And then, like, I was so sensitive that every time, like, they checked, like, I would, like, pretty much jump off the bed or whatever. So, we went ahead and got the epidural. I wanted to do unmedicated, uh, natural. Sorry, that was not pretty. Um, I wanted to do unmedicated, but one of the contractions that I had throughout the night, like I could feel, like in the upper left side of my abdomen. I had one that was so bad that it woke me up, and I was just in tears. And normally, I have a really high pain tolerance. All the techniques that I learned to do, like, unmedicated, was not working. So, I went ahead and got the epidural from the start. And then they started the pitocin, and then they broke my water. And so, like, I pretty much like, slept that entire day. Like, I had the peanut ball from start to finish. And then, once we got started... And I was pushing. I actually started throwing up. So I guess as I was throwing up, I was pushing him out too. So the nurse ran over, called the doctor to come in. The doctor comes in with like five or ten nurses. And um, as, I was, as I was pushing, they told me to stop. Come to find out, he had the umbilical cord, umbilical cord, umbilical cord wrapped around his neck twice. I can't even talk either. I'm sorry, guys. And, um, which stunned him. So whenever, um, after he got, after the doctor got done uh, clipping the umbilical cord, the, and I pushed him out and everything. He, they placed him on my chest, like, on my stomach, and I knew something wasn't right because he wasn't really breathing. And I know they're not breathing whenever they're on, on the inside. They're relying on me. But, like, once they, once he clipped the umbilical cord, I'm pretty sure he was supposed to start breathing because it, like, stopped all the blood supply. Um, so I didn't get the options to do, like, clamping or anything like that. And then I didn't get the option to have like immediate skin to skin like I wanted to because they placed them on my chest for like a few seconds and then they rushed them over to the little corner that they had over there and it took him like two minutes to get him to breathing to start breathing just because it stunned him and um once they got him to breathe um they put him back on my chest for about a minute or so and I got to give him a kiss, like, he was breathing, he was looking at me, and it was just, like, I wanted to breastfeed, like, this right away, but I didn't get that chance either. Um, so he was in the NICU for about a week, almost a week. Um, he was born Saturday, he got to come home Thursday or Friday. And, um, because they have this thing called, like, a transition room. Um, he was on IV fluids, and his sugars kept dropping in order to keep them elevated. Like, he had to eat in order for me, and, and in order for, or for him to get off IV fluids, he had to eat, too. He had to eat, so... I was pumping, I was doing everything that the lactation consultants told me to do everything and nothing was coming out so i was like let's just supplement with formula like i tried for like a week to get anything to come in and whenever it was time for me to come home my supply came in and like nothing was really coming out just like little drops like I wasn't squirting like a lot of the women that I seen in videos or whatever. So I was like, okay. Like, I did all kinds of stuff. And every time I pumped, 
like, I would get, like, some relief. But then, like, five minutes later, like, I'm in so much pain. So, I got literally no relief. And, um... Like... Whenever he, got, whenever he got to come home, like, I would wake up, I would wake Ricky up, I would change the baby's diaper, warm a bottle, Ricky would feed him, I would go pump. By the time Ricky got done pump, uh, feeding him, I got done pumping, and then we got like maybe like 30 minutes to an hour of sleep after that. So, it was literally like a decision to just stick with formula dry up a supply and get sleep get sleep because like for a little bit for like a week straight i did not get any sleep um neither did ricky um what else i feel like sorry i didn't want to like show my double chin again um <laughs> um but like he's in the nikki for like a week like he was on oxygen, oxygen at first, and then IV fluids, and he got off of those. And once he was off those for like 24 hours, like showing progression, like he was able to come home. But then he ended up having like jaundice a little bit. So they had him on this little Billy Blue blanket, his little mask on, and in the transition room. They kept it on him, so, like, I literally did not sleep. Like, I was up with him all the time, making sure, like, this mask didn't, like, he didn't suffocate from his mask, because he kept pulling it down over his face, like, his nose and mouth and stuff like that. So, it's constantly making sure he was not trying to suffocate himself. And, um... Yeah, so I am super tired. Being a mom is literally, it can be the most frustrating thing, but it's also the most rewarding. Because, like, at the end of the day, when you finally get them down, it's literally, it's literally just a, I don't know, it's just a feeling I cannot explain, like, my heart is full. Like, I never knew how much love I could have for somebody. I would move heaven, earth, hell for this little man. And I really need to go to get some sleep because I am so tired. But, whew, um, The best thing, my favorite part about Ricky is just, like, watching him become a dad and, like, postpartum anxiety is so real. Um, the first two weeks after giving birth, they hit, like, baby blues. And the night I was discharged, um, because I delivered Saturday. I was able to come home Monday. That night, whenever I was unpacking everything, trying to get everything ready, I somehow, somehow, the last older son that I have of him was lost in the chaos of everything, and I was pretty much, like, hyperventilating. Like, I couldn't stop crying. Like, I felt really crappy, like, I felt like a failure, um, for losing, a, like, an ultrasound picture, which I'm pretty sure I can go and ask my OB office, like, hey, can I have an, another copy, um, but I keep forgetting, I'm, like, crashing right now, guys, so I'm so sorry, um, he's just snoozing, Like, it's still hard to believe that I'm a mom. Like, I mean, this little, this little, this little human being. I can't believe it. Like, it, he's a little over a month. 
and it's crazy that like I'm still in shock that like I have a kid my little man so um what else I'm pretty sure that's like everything so yeah like I didn't really get the ch like I felt like I got robbed of the chance to breastfeed just because of how he was born just because of how like I didn't get the whole skin to skin contact I didn't get the chance to him to like latch on immediately immediately after he was born so yeah it really sucks but as long as he's happy he's healthy that's all I care about and he was born he, he weighed six pounds seven ounces 20 and a half inches long at like 6 45 in p.m. at his last appointment he was nine pounds and three ounces we are now in size three months close or three to six and uh size one diapers so he's growing he's getting big i wish he would stay a little forever but this is my 37 week pregnancy update plus my birth story and everything in between um but yeah, I hope I hope everyone has a fantastic Thursday. But I'm going to hop off here, try and get some sleep. Um and then I will also try to um give you guys updates, post other content. Um if you guys want, I can put together some new mom hacks that I wish I would have known or that I'm learning and share with you guys. Um, for the postpartum anxiety, there is something that I am taking that is helping me tremendously, which I can post the link down below. So... Um, I did create a shirt on Teespring. I can post that link down below too as well. So, yeah. I hope everyone has a great day. Bye.